from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. Mail collection boxes at three Henrico post offices are broken into and officials are trying to find out who did it. And the school system sends out a survey to parents and teachers asking for input about the second nine weeks. We'll have details about those stories and more in today's Henrico News Minute. It's Tuesday, October 6, 2020. Today's News Minute is brought to you by the Lakeside Farmers Market. And now for the news. We're in a story that we brought you yesterday on HenricoCitizen.com. United States Postal Service inspectors are investigating after outdoor mail collection boxes at six post offices in the Richmond region, including three in Henrico and one near the Henrico-Richmond border, were broken into sometime between Saturday afternoon and Monday morning. The blue metal collection boxes at the Innsbruck, Lakeside, and Regency post offices in Henrico and at the West Hampton location in Richmond, not far from Willow Lawn, were tampered with and pried open, according to Postal Inspector Michael Romano. Officials don't know how much mail might have been taken from the various locations. They were alerted to the situation after receiving calls from post office employees yesterday morning around 7 a.m. At the Innsbruck site, officials quickly placed crime tape around the boxes and covered the deposit areas with USPS plastic boxes while awaiting repairs that took place later in the day. Romano said it was too early to determine whether one person or a coordinated group of people were responsible for all six incidents or whether tampering with ballots from next month's election was the motivation. Now, theft of U.S. mail is a federal offense. It's punishable by as many as five years in a federal penitentiary for each count in addition to any other related charges and convictions that may occur. If there's an indication that the incidents are connected to attempted ballot fraud, Postal Service officials will work with the FBI to investigate, according to Romano. Anyone who dropped mail in the boxes at any of the post offices involved between 3 p.m. Saturday and 7 a.m. yesterday should contact the USPS hotline at 877-876-2455 to report it. Otherwise, unless the mail included tracking information, officials will not know about it. That same number is available to receive any tips about who may have tampered with the boxes, according to Romano. The Postal Service typically offers rewards for any information that leads to arrests and convictions in mail tampering cases. Romano declined to indicate whether any or all of the locations involved had video surveillance. He said officials are reviewing the security measures in place at post offices in the region. In the meantime, he advised people to mail items from inside a post office when they can and to not leave mail unattended in their own mailboxes. Mail theft and fraud are uncommon, he said, but he did add that his team had investigated several cases of break-ins at collection boxes in the Richmond region earlier this summer in July. Now, if you have voted absentee through the mail and you're concerned that your ballot may not arrive, you can always check to see when it has arrived at the registrar's office. We've got a link in this article on HenricoCitizen.com. You can find it by clicking on Government. Yesterday, Henrico County Public Schools officials sent a survey to all families of students in the system as well as all full-time faculty and staff. Officials are trying to gauge from families the interest level in various forms of a return to in-person learning should that become an option. And from staff members, they want to know how many will return to the classroom as well under the various possible conditions. The survey provided families with three possible options for a return to in-person learning. One would be that students would be divided into two groups. One group would attend Mondays and Tuesdays. The other would attend Thursdays and Fridays, while Wednesdays would be independent learning days at home for all students. A second option would involve a a five-day-a-week return to in-person learning, but with abbreviated school hours. And a third option would involve a four-day return to in-person learning with independent learning scheduled for Wednesdays. Now, under all scenarios, anyone who wanted to keep their children on a fully virtual plan would be permitted to do so. The survey asked full-time staff members to choose one of six options, indicating that they either would plan to return to their school site on November 16th, which is the start of the second nine-week period, if the school board votes to resume in-person learning 
on that day or would be requesting leave time based on the Federal Families First Coronavirus Response Act or that they would request an accommodation based on a medical condition to teach virtually or that they would plan to seek discretionary leave, plan to seek retirement, or plan to seek release from contract or resign. Immediate response to that portion of the survey was fairly negative among teachers and staff members online. The survey for parents is open through October 11th, that's Sunday. The school board has not made any decision about what to do in the second nine weeks of school yet. It plans to make that decision October 22nd after hearing again from its health committee. The board will hold its next meeting this Thursday and will also hear another update from that health committee at that time. Now responses to the survey from both parents and staff members are not considered binding, but school officials are planning to use them to help determine how many teachers, faculty members, and students would be open to returning to some level of in-person learning. The National Association of Counties recently appointed eight Henrico County officials to its committees for the 2020-2021 session. Brooklyn District Supervisor Dan Schmidt, Fairfield District Supervisor Frank Thornton, Tuckahoe Supervisor Pat O'Bannon, and Verina District Supervisor Tyro Nelson each earned appointments, as did Deputy County Managers Brandon Hinton, Monica Smith-Callahan, Anthony McDowell, and Steve Yob. NACO serves more than 3,000 counties throughout the United States. Well, it seems like a year's worth of running events here in Richmond are taking place during the fall season, some virtually, some in person, some a combination thereof. And there's another new event you can add to the mix. It's called Seven Marathon, Seven Continents. It's been launched by Metro Richmond sports backers, and it will officially debut November 7th in conjunction with the Richmond Marathon, Richmond Half Marathon, and Allianz Partners 8K. Participants can use those races as miles toward their virtual North American race. The new event will continue through January 31st, and participants will run either a marathon or half marathon on each of the seven continents, tracking their runs along the way while watching an interactive tracker move across the globe. In total, all participants will run either 183.4 miles or 91.7 miles to complete their journeys. Registration is $60. It's open now at sportsbackers.org. It also includes a long sleeve t-shirt, a finisher's medal, a virtual finisher's badge, seven pre-mapped marathon or half marathon courses, and more. Well, a week from tomorrow, Brooklyn District Supervisor Dan Schmidt will host a virtual constituent meeting to discuss the November 3rd general election and how to vote in it and to introduce Henrico's new police chief, Eric English. The meeting will be held from 6 to 7.30 p.m. on WebEx video meeting platform, and residents will have an opportunity to ask questions as well. For details, you can call 501-4208 or visit henrico.us backslash supervisors backslash Brooklyn dash district. Well, when the Central Virginia Rotary District 7600 office challenged clubs in the area to assist local charities with a pressing COVID-19 need, the Rotary Club of Innsbruck. Club members donated $4,500 to the Daily Planet, which serves indigent and homeless residents of Metro Richmond. That was the cost of four oral vacuum machines that the Daily Planet needed. They vacuum breaths and vapors from dental patients, allowing a dentist or hygienist to work on the patient more safely. They're considered particularly important in light of the pandemic. Dental care is one of the services offered by the Daily Planet, and the machines are already in use. Today's Enrico News Minute has been brought to you by the Lakeside Farmers Market at 6110 Lakeside Avenue. Be sure to check them out tomorrow, Wednesday, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. under the covered pavilion and indoors as well. You can also visit them online at facebook.com backslash lakesidemarketrva.